AutoCAD uses something called layers. They're used to group information in a drawing by function and to also enforce line type, color, and other standards like that. Layers are the equivalent of the overlays used in old time paper based drafting. Layers are our primary organizational tool in order to control the visual display of our objects. By creating layers, you can associate similar types of objects by assigning them to the same layer. For example, you can put construction lines on a layer. You can put text on their own layer, or dimensions, or the title block information on their own layer. You can then control the following. Whether the objects on a layer are visible in any viewport in any instance. You can control whether and how objects are printed. You can control what color is assigned to the objects on the layer. You can control what default line types and line weights are assigned to all of the objects on that layer. You can also define or control objects on a layer and how they can be modified or even if they can be modified. You can control whether objects are displayed with different layer properties in individual layout viewports. Every drawing includes a layer named zero. Layer zero cannot be deleted or renamed. It has two purposes. One is to ensure that every drawing includes at least one layer. And second, it provides a special layer that relates to controlling colors and blocks. It is recommended by me and other CAD users that you create several new layers with which to organize your drawing with, rather than create your entire drawing on layer zero. If we open up the architectural example file for chapter nine, we'll see here in this file that it has several different layers in it. Each layer contains specific data on it. On the Home tab in your ribbon, there is a Layers panel. There are a lot of buttons here. That's because layers have a lot of different settings. The more settings that something has in AutoCAD, the more important it is. Two good examples of that are layers and dimensions. These are two very important critical points to make sure you understand how to properly use and apply them in your drawings because they will control everything, especially the layers. So we have here in this pull down the current layer. That means whatever I draw will be on this layer. If you look in your properties palette, it will tell you the current layer. You can change your current layer by clicking here in the properties panel on the arrow. It will pull down a list that you can scroll through if long enough, showing you what layers are available. Now, in this one, we have layer zero, which is found in all drawings, def points which is also an AutoCAD based and generated layer. And that has to work with dimensions. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Now these layers here, doors, viewport, wall, windows, these were all created by me when I made the file. All of the doors are on the door layer. The viewport layer, which we'll talk about later on, has all the viewports on it. That's something we'll use in paper space when we go to demonstrate and show and display how we use the layers. Now there's also a wall layer, and a windows layer. This is a very short list, to be quite honest. Most drawings, well, there is no most drawings. Many drawings will have so many different layers in it, it could astound you. Where I'm currently employed at full time, our template file has over 2,500 layers in it. It's absurd the amount of layers. So that's why you have to understand how to use layers, when to use them, and when not to. All of these buttons on here will do something that you're going to want to need to know how to do. We're going to go over the majority of them. Some of them you'll hardly ever touch, while others you'll use constantly. This pull down for the layers works very similarly to the one in the properties panel. Wall is a current layer. To switch to a different layer, pick it. And you can see here in the properties palette that we have, it gives you your current layer. So when I draw a line, it's going to be that color. Now if I switch current layers to the wall layer, it's going to be this dark brownish maroon color. So you control the visual display of your objects through layers. Now I can control these objects by themselves, but I'm using the by layer functionality. 
We'll talk more about it later, but I can override this and make it red if I want to. But if I change the layer settings to a different color like blue, this will stay red. But everything else on that layer will turn blue. Use by layer all the time. There are rare exceptions when it's appropriate and are acceptable to use the layer settings, but stay away from it. Let's go through some of these buttons. This is the layer properties button. You click it to open up the layer properties manager. Now the layer properties manager is a palette. So you can dock it, you can stretch it, you can hide it, you can do anything you want to it that you can do to a regular palette. You can dock it in up high, you can move it down low. You can pick anywhere on the east and kind of move the columns around. You can stretch it out. And you can see here that there is a lot of information about your layers. If you're getting overwhelmed or frightened by all the buttons, it's okay. We're going to go through all of these things throughout the next series of sections. But to close the palette, you just click on the X. This button here will make a objects layer current. So if I select this door, up here, this isn't current, but it's telling you that's what layer it's on. If I click here, this will make this objects layer current. So that's a great tool to remember to use. If you want to switch between different objects layers, you can just select the object and click on the make current button. That's one way to switch. And it's one way Hey, I need to draw a door. So I can come up to this list and try to scroll through it, but if it's really long, then finding the door layer may be difficult. I can pick the door and just say, make it current. And now I can draw a new door and it'll be on the right layer. This is called the layer match or match layer. I select it and now I pick all the objects that I want to change. So let's say I want all of these walls here to change. I select them, press enter, and now I pick an object that has the properties that I want them to match. So that's a great tool. If you're drawing on the wrong layer or you need to switch something for some reason, for any reason, you can do that very quickly. These layers here are called isolate. This will hide all of these layers. So it hides everything else except for the layers that I selected. It isolates them basically turns the other layers off. If I pick the unisolate, it puts everything back to the way it was. It doesn't delete them, it just hides them so I can't select them. So that's a great way to isolate your walls, you know, make some changes. Like, let's see, let's delete that. Or if we were to do some other things, then we could unisolate everything, and that brings it back. So we can edit on a specific type of object like just the walls or just the doors or just the windows without having the other items get in your way and keeping them safe. Now you can freeze layers or turn layers off. We'll discuss a little bit later the difference, but what it will do is it makes them invisible, turns them off. They're still there. You can't select them or anything, but you can go to your layer manager, type in LA, and you can see here they're frozen. If I pick this, they'll come back. Turning layers off kind of does the same thing. Now, they'll be affected differently in viewports, and you can do different things the way they're loaded, and we'll talk more about that later on. But for now, you can turn them back on. And you have your freeze or your off. These are different layer states. You can put your layers in a specific way, certain colors, certain ones off, certain ones frozen, and you can save that in a state. So you can easily replace that or reinstate that layer system the way you had it set up before. So if you want to work with just the walls, you can say walls, you know, and give it a layer state where it turns everything off but the walls. Or maybe you want walls and doors. You can do that. Some of these other buttons here will turn all the layers on, will thaw all the layers. These will lock or unlock a layer. If you lock a layer, then that means anything that's on that 
layer, any walls, um, roads, windows, doors, ceilings, whatever it is. I mean, you can't edit the objects that are on that layer. You can add new objects to it, but you can't take them off. So if you're making an architectural drawing, like in this case, and you want to make sure the walls stay, say don't accidentally mess them up, lock that layer. This will change the current layer, changes the current layer of a selected object to the current one. So you can see it changed this layer that we selected, this object, and it changed it to the current layer. That's another way to change your object's layer types. Then we have a copy objects to a new layer, so that you can copy your object and it will put it on a, another layer than what it's on. The layer walk, this will show you what you have in types of layers. If you pick it, this is what it is, and as you select the objects, it just shows you what's on those layers. Doesn't do anything to the drawing, but it kind of tells you, hey, well, what's this door layer? Well, what does that have on it? Well, of course, it's the doors. The VP freeze will freeze that layer in all viewports except the one you're currently working in. Well, that's nice when you're using paper space and you make other views and viewports and you're creating some new line work and you don't want that line work to show up in the other views. Click it here and it will turn them off or actually it will freeze them, not turn them off, uh, so that they won't be displayed except for the one you're working in. The merge will just select layers, put them onto one target layer. It'll remove all the other layers from the drawing, so it cleans it up. And this is one thing that you can use if you get drawings that are very old from someone else who didn't have very good standards you know, on their layer management styles. And you'll know, put them all in one place, and then you can sort it out. It might make things a bit easier. Now, if you have a layer that's not being used, you can delete the layer here. Now, when you have locked layers, it will fade them, and that will tell you that they're locked. So you can adjust that here. You can make them not faded at all, or go all the way up to 90% where they're very faint. Or you can just turn the feature completely off. That's up to you. I typically will turn that off because I don't lock a lot of layers very often anyway. But when I do, I still want to be able to see them. So that's a lot of the layer commands that you have right here in the tab on the ribbon. A lot of these down here you're not going to use very often. These are the majority of the layers you're going to use as you have to navigate through your drawing and create different line work and objects. Turning layers off and on, freezing them, thawing them, isolating your layers is part of the drafting process in AutoCAD.